All right, everybody, so today I've been wanting to do a test on a very cheap drone, $60 drone versus a four to $500 DJI product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this thing connected and we're gonna give it a lot of time here to connect to satellites and get everything set up the way it should be just to give this the best opportunity possible. Now for the Hubson, we're gonna start it right dead center here. And I gotta wait and get this going. So I'm gonna wait for set compass. We're gonna do the best compass calibration we can. And then we're gonna wait for this to get all the satellites. And I'm, I've been really curious about doing this. Um, just to know what's the difference with a DJI product that's got all the technology in the world, that's got the US satellites plus GLONASS and downward positioning sensors. Um, so let's go ahead and close everything up. And now the first number here is satellites and we have zero. So if you can see that, zero satellites. And we're gonna go ahead and let this connect. So still zero, get out of its way. So again, just note the orientation of where this is at and we'll go ahead and wait for this to connect. Okay, we've got seven satellites, eight, good on battery power. And what I'm gonna do is when I take off, I'm gonna hover and just let it lock in its location. It should lock in the second we take off. We got 11 satellites. So let's go ahead and take off. So we got a little bit of a drift. I'm gonna take it down that way. Whew. It is windy out here, so this will be another good test. I'm gonna send it that way a ways. Still got 11 satellites. All right, and the wind is to our backs. I'm gonna stop there. We're gonna hold down our return to home. Got the confirmation, and we're gonna see how close we get to right there. It is turning and coming on back. All right, and it's coming. Let's get out of its way. And again, this right now, you can get this drone for $60. So it's pretty cool that it has this capability with the return to home, the GPS, it's flashing here. So that means it is returning to home. It's gonna be fairly close. I'm not sure we're gonna hit the mark. Oh, look at that. All right, hands off everything. Let it turn off. Okay, and I'm actually gonna leave this here, but I'm gonna turn it off just so we don't get any interference with the spark and this. So we got that unplugged. I'm gonna measure one, two, probably about three and a half feet. So I'll back up and there's that. So let's go ahead and get the other one set up. All right, so this is a little bit more of a process to get this set up. Go ahead, put the spark in the same spot with all the same conditions, let it fully set itself up. And then what the spark does that's different from the cheaper product is that when this gets up to about 30 feet, it's gonna take a picture of the ground and use its downward positioning sensors. So we'll go ahead and get everything set up. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let the spark just get set up. We've got a green light on the controller, which means the controller is connected to the, the drone. It says home point has been recorded, which is awesome. We've got 14 satellites. I've actually flown in this location before, so um, we should be should be pretty good here. 
go ahead and get this out of the way and again our Hubson X4 landed right there and I'm expecting that the the four to five hundred dollar depending on where you get it DJI spark is going to do a lot better but all right I think we've got a good amount of time I'll start the recorder just for the heck of it and let's get this show on the road Take off. So we're going to go up, nice and easy. Okay, we're up 70 feet. That should be adequate time there for this to get a good picture. And we're going to go the same direction that we did with the Hubson for about the same amount of distance. So we're going to scoot on out there. Now I will say between these two, the Spark is such a better craft to fly. I mean, this thing is just enjoyable. The sticks feel better. Everything just feels higher quality, which is what you'd expect, but it's not always the case when you spend more money. So we got it out there a little ways. If you can see it up there, we're way up there. And I'm gonna hold down the return to home. Go home. And now we're gonna get that annoying buzzing, or beeping. And I'm going to set this over here. Typically you want the controller in your hands, but for audio sake, we'll just get that away from us a little bit. And it's coming back. Now as of right now, it's a little bit off course. I can tell it's not perfectly lined up, but let's see if that downward vision positioning corrects it. So here it comes. Changing orientation. Oh, the wind just picked up, so I can see it's fighting that. Definitely fighting the wind. Here it comes. It slowed way down. Wow. Wow. That's insane. So that there is what an extra, what three to four hundred dollars buys you is that type of precision. So that's really really cool. Um, I'm really pleased with those results. I'm actually kind of surprised in some ways I thought that the Hubson may be just as close um, just because I've noticed that it has been pretty spot on in past tests, but that's pretty cool. So it gives you an idea of what to expect. Thanks for watching guys. Hit that subscribe button, like the video, and we'll see you in the next video.